welcome, friends, to the Happy Hour. We are having a special episode today talking about Rewind, so making up a backup strategy with our sponsor, Rewind. And this is, you know, of course, a, a, a topic that um, Heather definitely feels passionately about, as mm -hmm. do I. So we're going to share some of our experiences along the way. And really, how do we use these backups and strategies in our firms? We sure are. So um, I'll go ahead and share uh, who I am. So my name is Liz Scott, for those of you who don't know me. Those of you who do, hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm glad you know me. I do. <laughs> so our firm is based out of Oklahoma and what we specialize in is businesses who have QuickBooks. And so we work with businesses who have um, usually some type of solution needs. So they come to us and they need some apps and that has just became our norm. And I think that most of you would say that a lot of your uh, clients that you're working with have got at, least, at least two or three apps that they're using of some kind. And so how to connect those and the best practices is definitely the reality in our world. So Heather, do you wanna share some about you? I would like to share something about me. My name is Heather Satterley and I do what Liz does, but I do it in Rhode Island and not Oklahoma. So um, I have Satterley training and consulting, which is the consultancy part of my life. And then I also have Satterley accounting services, which is the accounting and tax side of my life. So. Um, love it. Been doing it for a really long time. And yeah, it's okay. You know what? I have some, some news that's actually kind of cool. What's that? Next week, I will have a new bio photo. <laughs> Yay! It's time, right? That's exciting. Yeah, I think this picture is now three years old. And so we couldn't do any pictures, of course, during COVID. And now that we're past, we're actually having firm pictures. And so I'm really excited. So we're doing oh, that's yeah, that's really fun. Yeah, we're going to do you and I are going to do pictures in September. Yes, we I'll are. Probably, and I'll probably have some done then, too. And in a really just horrible place. Just awful. Terrible. I kind mm -hmm. of feel bad for our husbands because they <clears> have to spend four days in Harry Potter land. Ah, I can't wait. I yes. can't wait either. So we're going to Orlando together. Very yeah, excited Super fun. All right. Let's introduce our guest. So Gavin is with us today and Gavin is from Rewind. Gavin, would you like to introduce yourself a bit and share who you are to our, our peers? Sure, absolutely. As mentioned, Gavin Cutler, uh, joining from the Rewind team where I'm the product marketing manager for our accounting vertical. And I'm actually about five or six weeks into joining the team now and coming from a background that's really heavily rooted within the finance and insurance industries. Uh, the last companies I was really working with heavily was Fairfax Financial, as well as Manulife, which is Manulife in Canada, but predominantly John Hancock in the U.S. I live in Toronto. Uh, we've got some sunshine right now, but you might see it darken because apparently there might be hail, um, quite a few inches of rain and potentially thunderstorm and tornado watch, but hopefully not. And, uh, you know, during the summertime, you can find me golfing every weekend. And if not, watching Formula One or doing something around the house. That is quite a whirlwind of, of weather forecasting. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> you kind of have it all. We're making do. So if my internet cuts out and I disappear, it, uh, it is not me. Well, you know, luckily, Heather and I both know Rewind and use Rewind. So if something we was to happen, we got you. We totally do. But uh, we're glad that you're here, though. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> So I want to say thank you to our champagne level sponsor. We have had ADP as our 2021 sponsor this entire year, and they have been able to make a lot of the broadcasting that we do and social posts and all the different things that happens without the hour possible. So thank you. And we are having an episode with them tomorrow. So we're continuing a deep dive. So we'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But those of you who have been participating in those deep dives for ADP, we have one more tomorrow. We do. And actually, I just wanted to call it out. Gavin brought to my attention when we were jumped on a little bit earlier, Liz, that, excuse me one second, <coughs> that um, uh, our reminder emails went out. So we have automated reminders that go out about our episodes 
one day, one hour, and one week before, and they all went out about this episode. So no, we're not doing rewind three times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing uh, we're doing rewind today. Tomorrow we're doing our deep dive with ADP on uh, ADP Account Connect, and then we're doing another deep dive with ADP next Wednesday at four p.m. So um, we'll get a, a another blast out to everybody so that things look right in your um in your mailbox and we apologize for any inconvenience that that may have caused you well thank you gavin for pointing that out because you know we love our automation and sometimes automation does things that are unexpected yes yeah, no, no worries i was just wanted to confirm whether or not i'd be appearing you know four days in a row or what the plan was <laughs> Not we're that you really want to be welcome. Here, Kevin. We're just so excited. Right. We're like, we want you here all the time. So. <laughs> yes. So we want to say thank you to this episode sponsor, Rewind. And yeah. you know, we're going to be talking about the backup and the restore and the copy. And that is all critical information, especially whenever we're working with QuickBooks Online. So that is our agenda today. We're going to go ahead and talk about that backup strategy and then have our phone toast. And so our toast, I'm just going to tell you, I've got it right here and it's staring at me and it's ready. So as it's soon as so we good. get there, mm -hmm, yep, it's in its ice cold. So, mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to talk about our coolest thing. And then also the details on our next episode, which just happened to be tomorrow. And then I'm going to go rescue the baby bunny out of my bathroom, but not with you guys watching. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that, that'll, yeah, that's a that's a whole side story. I mean, it is a side story. Yeah, All right. but <laughs> talking about why we need backups, Heather, I think that we have experienced all of these. Mm -hmm. And so even today, I was working with um, part of our team, and we were working with an app that had integrated into QuickBooks Online in an unexpected way. So. That wasn't intentionally uh, scheduled for today for that to go crazy, but it actually did. So that is that is a reality that happens even in our world where we're super careful about how we integrate solutions. Sometimes they do things that you want to back up or to change the way that they've imported data. So that was a big one for us today. And those CSV imports, you know, that's another one where we can say we can grab all of this data and we can push it in, but it's really best practices to make sure that you have some way to go back if you don't like the way that the data has imported. And, you know, it's not just us, like we're talking about when we're creating a backup plan for what we're doing. But we also need to be considering the backup plan for what our clients are doing. So I can't tell you how many times I've had a client that decided on their own, I'm going to go, and usually they're, they've done this before they found me, but they go in and they connect something without understanding what they're doing and it muddies up their QuickBooks data. And so, you know, having this in place for those types of errors is really important as well. For sure. And even as you mentioned on the app integration side, obviously a lot of these SaaS based companies like an Intuit, for example, will do a lot of work and legwork to make sure that these integrations and apps are going to work properly. But again, there is always variability. There are upgrades, there are patches, there are bug fixes, and those aren't always noted. They're not always understood. And having that sort of backup or reliance and security is really critical if anything like that were to happen, as you guys did mention. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's definitely both Liz and I do a lot of integration work and process work, and it is a go-to app. Um, every single one of our clients is on it because we understand that, you know, it, it costs time and money, not just for our firm, but for our clients. And we need to take every possible precaution to make sure that we're protecting their data. Well, and you know, one of the things that I feel like is whenever you're connecting an app, you have to be brave and yeah. bold. Yeah. So whenever you're doing that, there is a strategy there to being brave and bold. It's not just blind, but you're actually doing it in a way that, um, Alexander, you just pointed out being able to have rewind for um, testing. So absolutely, being able to make yes. a copy of the data is something that is the reason that we actually started doing backups and our data is to be able to say, let's create a backup and then maybe do something with it so we can 
have a version for testing. Mm -hmm. That's a really great point. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is like, okay, wait for it. Here it comes. <laughs> Here it is. Do, 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 do. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to share I, my, my horror story, my backup horror story that actually ended up pretty darn good. Um, so I was working on a client and I imported a chart of accounts and I looked at it and I said, eh, I don't like it. So I was being all fancy because sometimes I do that. And I said, I'm just going to purge it and start over. And when I hit the purge in the client's company, I logged in through QuickBooks Online Accountant and then opened their company and I hit that purge where you paste that, that URL in. Well, what happened was the cache had remembered that I had been in QuickBooks Online Accountant. And when I pasted it, it went back to my own QuickBooks Online Accountant data and wiped out all of my QuickBooks data, like all of it for Saturday training and consulting. Poof, gone. I remember sitting there looking at the screen going, and clicking the back button and then clicking into my, you know, my bank and everything. And it was all gone, poof, gone. And um, I they even called me. It was sad. I did. I was like, I think something really bad just happened to me. <laughs> well, it's like a little bit of disbelief. You're like, I don't, I really like, surely this is an error. <laughs> right. I'm like, this didn't just happen. And then I was like, but I think I have a backup. I think I backed up. And um, sure enough, I had. And so I was able to restore the data in and it was, you know, there was still some cleanup because I have payroll enabled and projects and other things, you know, other features. Um, but after that was the day that I connected every single client that I do, every client that I do, um, that I touch their books is now connected because that feeling was so helpless. And I knew that, you know, that Intuit has a continuous backup. I knew that, I could probably reach out to Intuit and at some point in the future, they would be able to restore my data. But I also knew that that wasn't going to be immediate and it wasn't going to be easy and it wasn't going to be fun. So it was almost like, it was like, it's like when you take out that insurance policy that you think you're never going to use and it's just that thing that you pay. And then one day you total your car and you're like, oh my gosh, thank God, God. you know, or travel insurance is probably a better example, right? You take out the travel insurance and then you actually have to use it. Something gets stolen and you're like, I'm so glad I did that. So oh, that was yeah. one of those moments, right? So absolutely. Yeah. It, you, you know, um, Catherine, she even put into our chats talking about into it, knowing what you just said is that yes, there is a continuous backup of the data, but would you be able to go back to that point in right. time whenever you wanted to back up to the data. And then to Catherine's point, she said that doesn't mean that they're in, into it's in a hurry to get the backup. You're just, not that you're just another customer, but you are one in line. So being able to have control of your data allows you to just move on. That's right, that's right. So, you know, it's, and then you're gonna be talking about another way to use Rewind to streamline your processes. And, and yours is a much happier story. I mean, mine's happier. It had a happy ending, right? Look, I put like, glitter on this because, I mean, it yeah, was happy. No, it was totally happy. Um, <laughs> it, it's you know. a pretty common thing, you know. It's that idea with a lot of the, the members of our team and, you know, every partner that we work with. It's what are the odds it's going to happen to me? How often do people really make keystroke errors? And then you start to dissect it and do a little research. and human error. And, you know, unfortunately, none of us are perfect. And that accounts for the majority of the mistakes that do happen. And again, as far as the, the backing up of data, you know, Intuit will tell you that, you know, they are doing this continuous backup on the data, but that is on a mass scale. So that's really looking at a mass data breach, like an earthquake or a meteorite or asteroid is going to hit their server. They're going to restore everything on a platform level basis. However, they're not going to do that or able to do that on a personal data level. And so it leaves you in this middle ground of not knowing if they can, will they, can you pay for it? And, you know, when people realize that's the case, they come to us and it becomes a much um, clearer depiction of why it's so critical to make sure that it is backed up somewhere else, because it also comes down to a lot of compliance issues as well with clients and for auditing purposes years down the road. You know, that's a really good point because, because Heather and I at one point went and looked at the um, into an agreement and it actually says that your 
you are in charge of your own backup system. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think so, it's 6.1 A. I could be a little bit off there, but A, they write it there. <laughs> you should, and you are liable, responsible, however they, the legalese is put, but they make it you know, very clear that it is not their responsibility on a personal account level basis to back up or restore any of your information or data. Which means that we do have to find our own insurance policy. And you know, Heather, you were talking about was insurance a really good example? And I'll share with, with everybody that we were just talking about how much I love traveling and I love my camper and I love going camping and being in the wilderness to me is just, that's my place. That's my happy spot. Well, at the very beginning of summer, you know, I had all of these trips planned and we went on our first um, outing at the end of April and this weird thing happened and we were in our fifth wheel and we hit one of these giant concrete barriers that was inside of a parking lot, not near a gas tank like it should have been, not near a curb like you would have expected, it was in the middle. So it wasn't something that we had anticipated and we were definitely glad that we had insurance because it took out both axles, like took them out. Like there was no way to roll the thing. So absolutely an insurance policy is, is, is handy. Yeah. And to that, you know, we, what we always say, and I'll steal this line from our CEO, you know, you, when you want to back something up, you don't want to back it up onto the same platform. You know, you don't back up your hard drive onto your hard drive. You want to find something that's outside and, you know, typically third party. So that way, you've got that layer of separation and security again, which acts as that secondary insurance policy. Absolutely. And, um, you know, this is, this is really to Alexander's point, being able to say, make a copy and to use that data. And so that would be a really good reason that you might want to take your QuickBooks file and you might want to copy the entire thing and then put that entire copy of that data in a separate QuickBooks file so that way you could do testing. And this is a really safe way to be able to connect e-commerce apps, for example. You sometimes get weird things that happen there and even you know payment solution apps. You know, there's lots of different apps out there that you wanna be very careful of the way that you connect them and the way that they import. And so testing environment is, I mean, this is key right here. It is. I mean, I, if you are, if you are creating integrations with your clients without testing them first, you are a brave soul. That's all <laughs> I have to say is that that's just really scary to me. Um, I always build all of my automations in a test company and test environment first. And then once I know they work and I'm getting the results that I expect, then I go and I connect the live data. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is one of those things that I'm sure many of you here that are with us, I'm sure many of you friends know that just because a solution says that it's going to connect to QuickBooks doesn't mean that it's the way that you want it and you would prefer to connect it or even accounting best practices. Mm -hmm. So being able to have some control is, is awesome. Yeah, exactly. You know, oh, it, go it, ahead. Heather. You know, well, what I would say is, you know, I want someone once said to me and they nailed it on the head is like, how do you know all that? You know, I know why you and actually what they said was, I know how you know all this stuff, all this stuff you tell people, you know, they should do. How do you know it? Because you messed it all up and you had to fix it. And I that's exactly right. That is 100 percent right, is that I have made tons of mistakes and had to clean them up and figure out how to work through the problem. And I learned the hard way. So I part of the reason that. I do happy hour with Liz is to save you guys the heartache of all of the times that I messed everything up and had to go fix it. So. <laughs> but that's, I mean, you know, that's, that's learning by scraping your knees. It is. And yeah. Sometimes those are actually the best life lessons. Agreed. Really ties into the whole ethos of how rewind came about, right? You know, there was a discovery in the industry and just, overall with the influence of the new way of working and cloud-based systems becoming more prevalent is that there really wasn't a comprehensive solution out there and people were losing data. And then there was this light bulb saying, well, why doesn't somebody do this? Why don't we just 
find a solution to it so that way we don't have to continually struggle and have all these stopgap measures in place of something that's properly secure. Right. Uh, I agree. And Elizabeth just said, sometimes learning the hard way is the best way. Um, I, I agree. It's painful though. It is painful. <laughs> and I have three kids and my oldest one, she likes to be the daredevil and go out and do things. And my two younger sons sometimes look at her and they're like, oh, I would never do that. It's like, yeah, because you saw her, you saw the results. <laughs> you learned what not to do. Yep. Yeah, and as um, I think Reba just put in the chat, there it can be very expensive, and you know, again, not having that backup or that restoration, it can put a company to standstill. And there's some articles out there that'll you know show you that if something were to happen and you're down for a day, a week, you could result in catastrophic failure for a lot of small businesses. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's very, very true. And I would even say whenever I'm doing, you know, a small integration, it's really nice to be able to to make the backup to make sure that it's going to go the way that I expect it, even if it's just little. But whenever I'm doing mass changes, so we're going in and, and you know, Heather and I, one of our favorite things is doing process mapping. We can do a lot of changes and we want to be able to see if we're going to be making all of these changes in the processes, if we're going to be adding these different solutions, at the end, are we able to get our expected results? And that's part of the reason for these test environments is to actually do a play-by-play -play of that entire scenario and then show that ha happy news <clears throat> to the client. So that way they can see what would it look like. You're right I got there? so excited and choked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so, okay, so this is, I need to make sure that I take another drink because I want to be really excited and I want to use my excited voice. This is like fun. So one of the things that, that Heather said that we use Rewind for is templates. So I don't know if you here with us, if you friends are part of that group that remember when QuickBooks Online had templates and it was inside of labs. And so it was really amazing to be able to go over and have a template of the list. So we could have a template of the chart of accounts. We could have a list of vendors. It was whatever list products and services or class list that you wanted to keep in place. You could actually make a copy of that template and use it in different places. Do you remember that Heather? I totally remember that. Yeah. And you could even, it told you exactly what settings it was going to apply. Um, it was very cool. It was. And so whenever it went away, I was very sad because we utilize that a lot. And the way that we would use it is if we had a new client that came to us, we might say we've got a preferred chart of accounts and we have a preferred way to go in and set up the books. And so we could take that template and we could, um, you know, um, disperse that template and it would uh, deploy and have all of the accounts that were laid out exactly the way that we expected them to be. So if the books were different than anticipated, we would be able to see easily where. And the really cool news is the way that we're using templates now is we're using them with being able to replicate companies. So in this case, what's happening is we have brand new franchisees that are coming to us and there is a franchise set of approved chart of accounts and lists. So we're able to say, okay, we want to deploy the way that the chart of accounts needs to look and all of the different best practices for this particular industry, we can have that inside of our template and store that chart of accounts from QuickBooks Online inside of Rewind and then deploy that for each one of these brand new standups. So to me, that is like really exciting. That is really exciting. And I bet that boosts your profit, your profit margin immensely. Well, and you know, startups, it's like you don't want to hit them with a hefty bill in the right. very beginning whenever they're getting started. So I think you have to have something that you're doing that's automated yeah. to be able to help make that affordable to a brand new startup. For sure. So I, I definitely, I miss, I miss the templates, but I was really happy to be able to find 
a solution to be able to stand in the place of those templates. So, um, you know, uh, Heather's, I heard a little bit of feedback. So Heather's situation where she was talking about making sure that she had a backup. Now, Heather, did I hear you say you do a backup of every single one of your clients now that works with you? I sure do. Yeah. So that's part of the packages. So when somebody signs on with Saturday Accounting, they get their QuickBooks subscription. They also get the backup service. Which is awesome. So that means that it's part of your packages whenever you are bringing on a new client and doing ongoing services. Right. Yes. So that's built into our pricing structure. Which is perfect. So we do the exact same thing too. So we can say, if there happens to be a catastrophe, we do have a backup option to be able to go back to, to be able to say, this is, you know, at such and such time, we need to be able to go back and restore those books. That is one of those offerings that we include in our engagements. Yeah, it, it really means a lot. Um... And it gives it gives us peace of mind. So yeah, I think it really helps create a great story with those different individuals that you're working with as well, because again, it's that assurance. Whereas before, I mean, it might, you know, there could be the question of what was happening before, and that was, you know, obviously with Intuit and the way that they're backing the system up. But now you can go to different clients and say, look at this assurance we can have. Look at this reliability, and that way they know again. It comes back to that longevity and the auditing, compliance, everything like that. That is now safe, and you know they don't have to worry right. about it every day. I have a question, Liz, from Jim, and it's a great, and I'm, I'm I'm posing it to you because, like I said, I use it as a backup, and honestly, I haven't had to restore anything, um, thankfully, um, in a while, but. Can you do templates of reports? So with the reports that are in QuickBooks online, like, and I'm what I'm thinking of are the customer wow. reports and, right. the, and the management reports too, because that's something that every new client, you have to create those management reports from scratch. And we do use that in our, in our firm. And so having a template that has all of our management reports that we could restore in via Rewind would be a huge benefit to us. Well, I don't do it via rewind, but there's a new feature inside, built inside of QuickBooks Online that you can share out your report templates. Yeah, no, so, I knew you could do that, but then you, um, what about management reports? Because that doesn't allow you to share out management report templates. No, it doesn't. So I would say, Gavin, is there a solution built into rewind for reports? Because I don't know the answer to that. I don't either. But so that would be very cool. Reports, not at this time, but I know there are some developments coming in. So I can oh, okay. with our product team. I'm, you know, we're always trying to speak with as many partners and members of the team as we can to understand where we can go next. So I can definitely take this away and see what's coming down the pipeline, if we have any information, if this is something on the horizon, and let everyone know. Fantastic. Yeah, I think that that would be great, Jim. If you wanted to even put in chat what it is that you're exactly looking for, are yeah, you for? Great. Yeah. You know, P and L by month. Are you looking for something specific in a group? You know, what exactly is it that that you would want Gavin to go back to rewind and say on Happy Hour? They said they want this. <laughs> yeah, that and kind then, of feedback is just it's invaluable to us. It's great. Mary also has a question. She wants to know what happens to the backups if you no longer work with the client and disconnect them from rewind. Are they just deleted at that point? Are they held for a little while? Can the client grab them? What, what's it, it would really depend, right? Because with uh, Rewind, it's on that subscription basis. So if you're still actively housing that QBO file and then you're paying for the Rewind subscription, that's going to sit there and we're going to hold on to that. If you were to disconnect, there is a time period where we would host that and then eventually it will be permanently deleted, but we do host it just in case, uh, not for an extended period of time, but again, it really depends on what you're doing with the QBO file itself and how long you're keeping that on your books as well. And, and I can even speak to that because I've had a scenario where I had a, a client that transitioned from us over to another practice. And mm -hmm. during that time period, we had the backup and we were there just in case that transition didn't go as smoothly as expected. We kept that that backup in place, and um, it was there for a while. And then we we were all in agreement that it was unnecessary any longer. And I don't remember what the time period was, but it feels like it might have been like ninety days or something. It's interesting. I like I kind of like the the idea of that, Liz. I mean, you could if you disengage from a client 
you know, resell it, right. And say that we'll keep it connected to our company or, or keep the rewind, you know, for a certain amount of time. Just in case. So, yeah. If they want it. Yeah. I, I, is there any, is there any way now, Gavin, to transfer the ownership of that? Like if I were to transfer it to a client, would, is there any way to do that? That I can confirm for you. Um, I don't want to say anything just in case, but uh, I'd like to confirm some of the details there. Just because sure, I know okay. there can be some, de depending with uh, privacy and all gotcha. how okay. the back yep. end. Yeah, we, we always want to make sure everything's done as securely as possible. And of course, we, yeah. we do sometimes get requests and we always have to confirm it's the right owner of the account and all mm -hmm. that. So I can confirm what the process would be for that. No, that's awesome. And that's typical. I mean, that's typical yeah. with any any SaaS space, especially a financial SaaS space accounting as you, there's usually you have to provide corporate yeah. documents and, you know, proof of ownership and proof of identity and all that other stuff. But so. you can invite users. So you that's, invite users. that's one way that you would be able yeah. to share access to it. Got it. Yep. So I'm going to say that we are very, very grateful to have Gavin here to be able to take us through Rewind. So this is where my really pretty glass has been waiting anxiously for me to pick it up. And so it's very pretty and it's got lots of ice cubes in it. And so, of course, during the summertime, it's nice and refreshing. So any type of fruit. Yum. And your champagne mm -hmm, and some chilled, mm -hmm. chilled ice cubes. And you can even make the frozen fruit ice cubes, which is fun. It is fun. You can just throw strawberries in a plastic baggie and throw them in. Oh, are... that's a great idea. We've gotten into those or whatever. silicone um, ice cube oh, trays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so those are really fun too. So mm. I'm going to say cheers to Rewind. And the Rewinder is very yummy. It is very yummy. Ooh, frozen grapes. Good one, Catherine. Ooh, I've never done that either. Yeah, frozen grapes work well with wine that needs to be chilled. Ooh. Exactly. And so I'm going to quit sharing my screen so that way I can pass it over to Gavin. And then do you have those slides there or did you want me to actually drive them? I'm, I'm, I should have um, asked them. That's, that's fine. If you still have them, if you want to drive and then I can just- Sure. Them, um, She'll play Vanna today. I was Vanna last week. I am happy to. Here we go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, we can skip this one because, you know, already had a quick conversation on about Rewind, who we are. Um, but really today, just going to start off with a quick introduction to Rewind itself, what backups for QBO does, and then I'm going to take you into the product so that way you can see what it looks like and how we can use it. That's our favorite. We love hearing all of the details and then seeing it in action. Yes, and it's, you know, it's quite straightforward and it's great. So the demo is really clear on how the system operates and all the different types of information that you can have as well. So next, keep going okay. here. And uh, you know, without further ado, this is Rewind. So right now we are the leading backup app for Shopify, BigCommerce, QuickBooks Online, GitHub, Trello, and uh, many more. And really we are continually looking for new platforms to add to our uh, group of companies that we partner with. So if there are any other suggestions or recommendations or different uh, apps that you might work with, please feel free to pass those along because we are continually adding them and trying to become more robust and comprehensive as a company. That's awesome. I haven't worked with GitHub. So that's it's one, one of our newer additions. Yeah. Okay. So it's, yeah. it's very new in the process, but we're bringing them on board, starting with a couple of new onboarding journeys. And, you know, it's, it's a great platform, a lot of users, a lot of content on there, and it really needs that backup type system. And we're hoping we can really help a lot of individuals there. Well, and, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure to point out that, you know, Rewind backs up more than just QuickBooks Online. So our Shopify clients we do a lot of work with those individuals. And so being able to have a backup solution for even Shopify is an option here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we have a, a, quite a few different um, clients and partners that will work between multiple platforms. And it is a necessity as we move towards a very cloud-based uh, ecosystem. Agreed, agreed. And uh, here's just a quick recap of our two founders. So that was founded in 2015, and we've got Mike Potter, our CEO, and then we've got James Lesky, which is our CTO. Nice. And um, for those of you that know a bit about us, we are based out of Ottawa in Canada. So I'm working remotely in Toronto. 
We have grown quite rapidly. When this deck was put together, we were at 80 employees and now we're at 100 and growing. So that was just over in the past month. And we've got an average of five star ratings with over a thousand reviews and that continues to climb every single day. And that's across all of our platforms and feel free to go to the Intuit QuickBooks online app store and see some of the reviews there because there's fantastic reviews across the board. And as I mentioned, we're just trying to expand our backup service to new SaaS tools. So again, if there's anything you are looking for Rewind to help protect, please let me know, either drop it in the chat or send me an email after this and we'd be happy to communicate with you and see what we can do. Nice. Mm -hmm. And really our mission here, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's very simple and it's very powerful, very much so like our app. It's to back that SaaS data up and protect all cloud data for businesses of every size. So that way we can help anyone across any industry. And that really is the end game for us. Which is a great point because it doesn't matter the size of the business. A backup mm -hmm. is important to any company. So, exactly right it's, it's not just something that affects these massive companies where you hear the data breach where mastercard or sony's playstation network was hacked and a million people lost credit card information this is something that you know it can be as mentioned a financial disaster for the smbs for the large companies so it is not agnostic to any of those groups i agree with that and it's because it's so affordable it's accessible Exactly. And it's, it's one of those, you know, cost of doing business and we'll touch on it where we're, you know, the old way versus the new way in that cloud based information. And I mean, I guess this slide depicts it here and SaaS apps, they are a growing market. So every single year we're seeing companies and partners that work with Rewind, they're using more and more SaaS applications and they're increasing their tech stack and their tech spend every single year. So what we're seeing in the industry is that the SMBs and companies with about one to 500 employees, they can be using from anywhere uh, from 40 to up to 120 different tech apps. So again, when we talk about, you know, the new way of doing it, everything, that is a lot of information floating around. And imagine if you're working with 40 to 120 different tech apps, tech apps, sorry, the amount of integrations that are going to be happening there. That's why it's even more prevalent to have this kind of backup or this reassurance. And I know this is something that we did quickly touch on, but QuickBooks Online, they do back up their platform data, but they don't do it on the account level data. So now you've got companies that are continuing and increasing their dependency on SaaS applications every year, but many of these apps, these platform level apps don't offer you that backup. So QuickBooks Online, for instance, they will back up the platform, but not everyone has access to that account level data. And so that's why it is even more imperative to understand what is happening with these platforms and especially with QBO, you know, what they're providing you, what's able to be backed up, what can you restore? And that way you've got the assurance for yourself, but uh, also your clients. And, you know, I mean, you said it, you've got the assurance for yourself because there, there is a chance that they, you are going to be able to get your backup, but just like was mentioned in the beginning, when you're <laughs> in line. And so, um, and also the other thing is you're not going to be able to pinpoint exactly where um, in the point of time the data was actually backed up. So you have a lot more control here. Exactly. And I mean, it can be from a full restoration to a single level transaction. And we'll show you that in the demonstration as well. But from, from this slide, you can see, and this will better explain what we're talking about. So you can imagine a meteorite landed on Intuit's server or Intuit did experience a massive data breach. These events are extremely unlikely for the business, but if it did happen, Intuit would be able to restore all of your data and everyone else's data that was lost. But really that's where it stops. So the solution that we've built is for that data loss and those data loss situations that are way more likely to occur. So we've got the malicious attacks, the buggy apps and third-party integrations, disgruntled clients. And of course, as I mentioned, our number one enemy and that's ourselves. We don't like to think about it. We don't like to admit it, but being human, we have human error. And that right. is by and large the number one reason that people or companies are gonna end up losing data. Well, it's like Elizabeth said, um, we learn the hard way. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we, we like to, you know, you can still have that learning curve when it's backed up. It's no longer this existential crisis. You know, it's a simple click, you're restored and you can continue life as normal. Yeah, it's not as painful that way. 
Yes. Yeah, you can still learn. It's just <laughs> no need for the, the phone calls to friends as uh, Heather was calling you. <laughs> right. And so, you know, it's, it's something that I have mentioned a couple of times. And it's that concept of what's happening of the old way versus the new way. And we've built QBO to really say goodbye to that old way or the existing way of backing up clients' financial data. So there's no more really of that reliance or need to make these manual copies of client files, these CVS exports, or storing redundancies on hard drives and then keeping them around the house or the office. More importantly, gone are the days where accounting professionals do not have access to restoring that, restoring that client data in real time. So with Rewind, what we're doing is introducing a new way of protecting your data where you're going to have full access and full control over the financial information that lives in the QBO file. So really going from a single point in time backup to this automated continuous backup, but also included with that is the restoration. I like that you're sharing what's happening because once everybody sees it in action, they're going to be like, wow, because if you don't know about Rewind, it's a wow -er. And so, you know, as we said, we're really trying to help usher in a new way of doing business. What we're doing is bringing this automated daily backup and on-demand controlled data recovery. So the critical part here is that quick data recovery. You don't want a minor setback to cost you tons of time or money by just eating into the profitability of a file or even hurting the reputation of your practice or your business. So with Rewind offering that continuous backup coverage, you've got this reliability and the certainty that no matter what the mistake was, you can recover the client file down to a specific transaction to a point in time, giving you that true on-demand data recovery. What could have been hours or weeks worth of manual work or money lost or time spent, that can now take just a few minutes with Rewind. And that is the last actual slide. So what I can do, I can take over the screen and I can start sharing and show everyone what it looks like here. There you go. You have Q. control. Okay. And can you guys see my screen here? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right. Well, the first thing I need to do, um, if anyone doesn't use it, 1Password is a wonderful tool and highly recommended for data security. Um, so this is something that we use across Rewind. We're big fans of two-factor authentication and other data security purposes. So if I were to log in here, this is going to take us into the Rewind Vault. And this is what the QuickBooks file is going to look like. And it's going to have all of the key information that you need for your file right here. So listed here, we're going to have anything as far as, you know, customer updates. We have our invoices. We've got different types of journal entries. At the very top here, we can see when the last full data backup was completed. On the top right here, we can see when the next scheduled data or scheduled backup will take place. Now, these do take place every 24 hours. So that's something that you can adjust the scheduling of, but it will take place. And there's also this big button here, which is backup now, which will actually do a full file backup for you at that moment in time. And that can be used if you want to start maybe with a third party integration, you want to test something within the file. That way, you know, it's backed up to a very recent point in time and you're able to restore that data very quickly and very easily. We've got a search functionality so you can search for different types of transactions for a specific client that you might be working with. You might have noticed that we do a lot of work with Walt Disney. It's a favorite within one of our demo accounts. And in addition to that, you can search by the number of filters that we have. So anything from the bill to class to customer and employee type. Now that's just more of the, the high level overview. So what I'll do is I'll click into one of the actual invoices here so you can get a better understanding of the benefits and the services that Rewind does provide. So if I were to click into this invoice here, on the left side here, we can see the information about the document, the transaction date, the due date, and the balance due. Now, on the right side here, this is every single time that this file has been edited, updated, or amended. So as I mentioned, we do that 24-hour backup. You can do a backup now. But every time you go into one of these files and you adjust an invoice, a client type, it's going to be backed up. And it's going to be backed up based on the date and the time that it was done. 
So if I were to click on something that we would have done on June 9th, for example, on the left side, we can see what the live transaction is in the file. And on the right, we can see that this balance was $33. So there was a big significant difference that happened within this invoice. Now, if we wanted to say this is actually the correct one, we would simply click restore to this version. And in a couple of minutes, you've got this now as the most recent and accurate invoice that's in place. But if we'd like to know a little bit more information about exactly what's happened between the two of these, or if you want to get a bit more technical, you can click the source code button here at the very top. So what that's going to show you is a side by side version of the current as well as the selected invoice that we're taking a look at. And it'll help you identify what the differences are by highlighting them to you. So we can see at the top here, we've got the balance 508 versus 33.99. It also will tell us the ID here, as well as the total cost that was associated with that. So the 450 versus the 30. In addition, we can see here at the bottom, the quantity. There was 10 versus that one. And also the unit price here, 45 versus 30. So that way we can see how we got to the amount of 450 as well as the amount of $30. So this really just gives a bit more assurance that if you've made changes in the past and you're unsure of where you really need to go, you can restore to the singular point in time, but you can also identify the different details that are within the file to understand what the change was, if it was a pricing thing, if it was quantity, so it really provides an in-depth look as to all of the details you might need for that specific file. Now, if I were to jump back into the vault here, so we've got the advanced restore. So this is, you know, if there's that major data issue that happened, something goes wrong, something is completely wiped out, this will restore the entire QuickBooks online file back to a specific time and date. So what you can do here, you can select the specific time as well as, or sorry, the specific date, and then the specific time as well. We also have a pre-restore checklist just to make sure you can do all of your checks and balances to make sure everything is put in its place. And then once everything is selected, you can restore these items. And this will actually do the entire file itself. So the benefit here with Rewind is we've got those singular file transactions, which we can view here. But then we also have that advanced restore, which will do the entire file for yourself. The last element, and this is the copy function. This is something that is still fairly new to Rewind. But uh, as Heather and Liz were mentioning before in the call, what it allows us to do is take the source file and we're able to copy it and put it in another destination. So again, we can leverage this if we want to be doing any of this testing, any of work within the file, and we just want that assurance that it's going to be there. Or if we're going to be setting up multiple different files for a new business and we can have that share across them and easily and in a fiscally responsible way, set up those different companies and those QBO files for them. Again, we want to make sure that all the checks and balances are done. So we do have this pre-copy checklist down here. And that'll make sure that uh, you're running through the right steps and everything will be copied. And also following the copy itself, Rewind will send you a full report of everything that's gone, if there were any successes, anything that might need to be amended or anything that we need to help you with to make sure it's done accurately. And that is really in a nutshell what Rewind offers you. As I mentioned, it's a very powerful tool but very simple in itself when we want to take a look at really how it works and how easy it is to work within the actual software itself. So that's a really nice overview and, and diving into some of the features of Rewind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being able to actually rewind a transaction or rewind a data file is really powerful. So being able to do it on the individual transaction level or on the entire company level is something that's new to a lot of us. Yeah, exactly. So we wanted to provide that flexibility and that's where it's been a lot of great feedback that we've received from our customers on the ability to do that independent file transaction, even do that side-by-side -side comparison and understand where these changes are happening. Am I selecting the right file? Am I backing up to the right time? And then that advanced restore, as we mentioned, you know, who knows if you were to have a catastrophic data failure, when you might get that information back. 
Could be now, could be never. And it, you might be waiting in this queue. This way, you've got the assurance that you can bring that back to life. And what could have been, you know, who knows the, the financial ramifications. It's, it's something that's going to be mitigated pretty substantially. So true. So we have a couple of questions. Yes. Yay. <clears throat> so one, uh, one question is, what happens if, or if limitations occur if you try to rewind a transaction that is connected to other transactions, for example, deposits, or in a period that's closed or locked? So in, in deposits or a period that's closed or locked? That's a great question because you know that that one transaction is going to affect several different transactions. You know, I I don't want to speak for you, hmm. of course, but my thought is that you know a lot of times whenever we're connecting and importing data, we have to to go in and actually make those connections. So I might have, for instance, the invoice that comes in and the payment that comes in, but I would need to actually open up that transaction and make that connection. Am yeah, I, not, am I wrong in this case? No, not, you know, that, that's a very, uh, that's a great question, very in depth. And I'd like to really reach out to our product and our technical experts just to confirm. Um, so the deposits are closed or locked. So I will absolutely get that information that I can share that with the group as well. Fantastic. And then Allison's asking, can I, can I use a copy function to copy a file to a new subscription? And I think the answer to that is, yeah, that's what that copy does yeah. is you're basically taking um, her example, she has a not-for-profit that just bought a subscription to TechSoup mm -hmm. and QBO, and she needs to take it back up and then restore it. So the answer to that is yes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll take that file over. Obviously, you want to make sure that everything's done from that pre-copy checklist. But yeah, we can transfer that information, and that is the basis of copy. So you can take that source file from somewhere else, and you've got that almost template or basis, and you can import it to another QBO file. So my question there is. Do you see that there is a time period that that import of data needs to happen inside of that new QuickBooks file? I don't think there's a, a specific time. It's, mm -hmm. you know, really, again, it's just taking a, a snapshot of that backed up data from a certain point in time. And so it's just when you're ready to port that over and it, it's in a place that you're comfortable with, I think it would be more on a personal basis than uh, a be beneficial or preferred time. Oh, that's perfect. Liz, I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. We had another question in the Q&A if you want to take a look over there. Yeah, you you um, you read my mind with launching the poll because I think that what we might do during the um, poll is I might start sharing my screen. Perfect. Um, okay, I can hand that back over. Fabulous. And I'll start sharing my screen because you had a promotion that you wanted to offer. Yes, we did. and. Before I jump to that, I actually just want to let everyone know on July 5th, we just transitioned over our pricing to a new product called Flex Pricing. And the whole basis of this is we're actually decreasing the overall price per file, the more files that you actually add with um, Rewind itself. So if you are interested and you head over to the Rewind website, you'll see the pricing. We've got a new slider scale. So you can understand that the more files you back up, it actually reduces the per file cost. So our customers are seeing a reduction in the actual overall subscri subscription cost to Rewind for QBO. So that's, that's a bit great. of a great thing to start with. And then we're also offering a code that is specific to the Happy Hour folks here, and that is Happy Hour 10 for two months. And so that would provide 10% off for the first two months of your subscription. And that will be expiring on July 17th at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Whenever I see the midnight, it's like, you know, that little part of me, this, the risk taker says, okay, so wait until 1150 to it's, start. It's 11.59. <laughs> I've, I've seen the coupon set up and it, it is there. It's we oh, like to always funny. account for different time zones as well. So generally at the end of the week, but we like to add on a little bit more time there. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and close out the polling. So I'll count you down. Thank five, you. four, three two and one. All right. Awesome. We got a lot of people interested in rewinds. So that's fantastic. Yeah. And we're, we're happy to set up additional <laughs> phone calls with, you know, additional demos. If you'd like to learn more, bring anyone else on our team as well, just into the mix, because we're happy to share about the information. We're excited about it. And 
would love to uh, you know meet with more individuals and well, learn more about what they have to say about it. Well, thank you. So I, we are very grateful. We love demos and we love understanding more about the product as a group because we ask good questions. So yes. lots of good questions that were asked today. I have something new that I want to share with you. Some of you might have seen this before. It is not a QuickBooks app, but as you know, Heather and I like to have our segment, the coolest thing. And so here is our coolest thing that I found that I wanted to share with you. And it's called OneTab. And so Heather, are you familiar with OneTab? I know you use something very similar. I do. I use an app called Groupie for the Windows, um, for the, the Windows apps. And then I also have used in the past, I don't use it anymore. And it was called, I can't remember what it was called now. Sorry. So the cool thing with OneTab is that you use it in your browser. So it is a Chrome extension. So if I show over here, you would, you would activate it by going over to the Chrome web store and gathering it. And what it does is super cool. So what it does is it goes out and any type of browser that's open, you can click the one tab and immediately it makes a listing. So why is that cool? I will show you. So if I come over here and I have my browsers open, you know, maybe I've got my, my workflow open. Maybe I've got an app that I use and maybe I've got QuickBooks open and, you know, various different things that I might have open. What I can do is I can hit my one tab and immediately it's going to actually make a page in one tab that is going to be all of those open tabs that I've got. So very I could actually, I, it's very, very cool. So I can actually separate this and I could use them individually or I can even, if I wanted to close this, I could then also say I wanted to restore them. So I would be able to restore all of those, that entire group. This is really great if you're like me and you wanna go out and search a whole bunch of articles or you wanna go out and do a dump, bunch of different things in the morning or whatnot, and then you get busy in the afternoon. You're like, I wanna be able to pick up in the afternoon where I left off or maybe in the next morning. Well, you can create these tabs of everything that you have open and then come back and you can restore them all. You can even That's share awesome. it. Yeah, so it's super cool. So if you find a whole bunch of articles and you're like, hey, I really want my best friend to read all of these. Well, you can share a one tab link with them. That's really cool. And it's free. So we always love like that free. free. Yeah, we're, like we're big free. fans of free. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So th to all those who stayed with us, I want to, well, wait till we, we'll get till we get on the next slide, but you can talk about this one. Sure. Okay. I'm, so, I'm so excited about the, the secret <laughs> special guest. So the thing that if you want to go and look at our prior episodes, you can of course start with our website. And then if you want to see our whole catalog, you can go over to YouTube and you can find more about us and more about all of the episodes. So you can actually search our catalog to be able to find um, a, a a webinar that you want to look at, but I think this is where Heather, you wanted to land. So here we I'm are. I'm so excited. So first of all, we're going to talk about Accountant Connect, which is an app that I love. Um, but we also have a special guest that's going to be joining us tomorrow. So you definitely want to join. We have like a superstar guest. So right. are you guys ready? I'm going to do the drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> Don Brolin is going to be on Appy Hour tomorrow as we talk about ADP Accountant Connect. So if you want to come and hang out with Don Brolin right. and learn about Accountant Connect, I cannot think of a better way to spend an hour on a Wednesday afternoon. She's definitely a cool kid. She is totally a cool kid. So <laughs> you don't want to miss that. It's always so much fun um, to have Don around. And it's been a lot of fun having you with us, Gavin. Thank, Thank you very you. much for having me. I appreciate it. No, this so is we, fantastic. We are definitely grateful. We've we've learned a lot, and of course, those demos are just invaluable because we get to see it in action. So, thank you for being brave during the weather storm to go live with with the demo. It's not dark and it's sunshine again, so who knows? It's, it's <laughs> out there. hey, fingers crossed. Because you said you have a brand new house, and let's not let the storm take it. Yeah, let's let's avoid that. <laughs> well. Thank you to everyone for joining us. Thank you to our sponsors for making this all possible. And to all of you, I would like to say goodbye and hopefully you will be joining us tomorrow during our ADP Deep Dive with our special guest, Don Brolin. Yay! <laughs>
Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.